Recently, I came across uh, an old book online in the Internet Archive that I used to own, and it's Peter Norton's Assembly Language book. And interestingly, it talks about assembly language, but it doesn't actually use an assembler. So it shows you how to do um, x86 assembly, but not with an assembler. And the way that they do that is with a program called debug. Now, they don't have this program anymore in Windows, but debug was available with all versions of MS-DOS when you got it. Now, you just type in debug and you get this, which doesn't really tell you much. But debug is useful because you can use it to do things like add hexadecimal numbers. So, for example, if you want to add 2 and 1, it shows you the answer is 3, but it also shows you the subtraction, which is 1. So this works pretty much for all of the hexadecimal numbers. So you can do 9 and 1, and you will get A, which in hexadecimal is the number after 9, or 8, which is the number before 9. So this is really quite useful if you needed a hexadecimal calculator to do addition or subtraction. And it will just show you. So uh, F plus 1 is 10, uh, or minus 1 is E. Now the other thing you can do is it'll show you all of the registers. If you just type in R, it will show you all of the registers. AX, BX, CX, uh, stack pointer, all of it. It's all there. And the flags. But you can also change the value in a register. So if I did RAX, for example, that shows me what it is now, but I can make it um, this. So now if we look at the registers again, you can see that AX is now FFEE. Now, another way to do this would be to use the move instruction. So, for example, if w there's another command called A, which is to assemble, right? And an assemble, I can do uh, A, and then I do the command. So, move BX, FF, F, 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 and then I'm done. And then I hit T to trace. So, trace is kind of like a step in, a, in the other debuggers. Uh, so, if I trace it, you can see that it's now put FFFF F, F, F into BX, right? Um, debugger will also dump a range of memory. So if I want to dump a memory range from, you know, I'll just pick something off the top of my head, uh, it will dump the memory and show you what's in the memory, which is very useful. Now, the other thing that it, Peter's book tells you about is software interrupts like int 21 uh, or interrupt 20. Uh, and he basically goes through this book showing you how to use these. Now, one of the other things is he shows you how to input um, data into a range. So I'm going to just quickly dump some hexadecimal numbers into these memory locations. So I'm going to put, um, uh, let's see, 48, and then 65, and then 6C, and 6C, and 6F, and then we'll do 20, and 59, and 6F again, and then just do 75, and 54, and 75 again, and then 62, and then 65, and then let's do 21, and then 24. So that's all been put in there, but if I now, let's, let's assemble a program. So we'll do assemble, and we'll do move AH09. And we'll move into DX, the memory location that we just typed all those numbers into. 
and then we'll call interrupt 21 which is to print and then interrupt 20 which is to return control of the program and then we can do G which is go or run and there you go so the hexadecimal numbers up here 48 is H E 6C is L L 6F is O then a space and then 59 is Y, capital Y, etc. So, and 24 is the dollar symbol, which is the end of string symbol in DOS uh, or assembly. I mean, and so it's really useful to go back to these sort of old programs and have a look at them and see what they do. Um, now, you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good if I lived in the 1980s and I had a 286, but I don't, so what do I do now? Well, what you can do uh, is, let me just quit out of this and bring this over, is you can, if you wanted to, download Microsoft uh, MS-DOS or Windows or uh, many other um programs from here, winworldpc.com. Now these are just an archive of the old sort of uh, programs that abandonware, I think people call them now, but you can get um, the operating systems, applications, games, development tools. Now I went through Peter's book there and I used debugger to do the assembly, but you can actually download MASM, uh, which is the Microsoft Assembler, or uh, TASM, which is the Turbo Assembler from Borland. And they're all available on here, on this software. And then you can pop them into a virtual machine with VirtualBox or, uh, you know, VMware or Virtual Manager on Linux or, uh, you know, QEMU or whatever you want um, to create a virtual machine and do what I did. You know, you have uh, available to you a nice uh, sort of Windows MS-DOS virtual machine that you can use and run. So I recommend if you got a bit of time and you're interested in this sort of thing that it's probably worth just playing about with it. Um, and you can get old versions of uh, Unix systems, uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space is in here somewhere, yeah, Plan 9, um, OS 2, you can get old Macintosh programs, um, and I think some of the old Macs, you need a Motorola 68K CPU, but you can get emulators for all of this stuff, and, uh, and, and run it as a virtual machine, and have a play about with this old sort of software. Uh, there's also games and applications you can try, um, and you can do searches. So if you want to, if you actually did want to search for MASM, uh, you could do it. Um, but I think I found it like that. Yeah, assemblers. So you got the Borland Turbo Assembler and the IBM macro assembler and the Microsoft macro assemblers and various versions of these as well. And so you can find these old books um, on the Internet Archive or other places or even in, in old shops, uh, in charity shops and things. And then you can use these books to do some assembly language programming or C programming or whatever you want. And, and it's all free. It doesn't cost you anything. And most modern PCs has an assembler. Of course, modern computers, you can use GCC. There's lots of free options for uh, compilers and editors and all that sort of stuff. But when you're dealing with old CPUs that you know don't have threading and multitasking and all of that sort of stuff built in, it's a lot easier to, to learn the basics of something like Assembler than just trying to jump in and, and doing a, a modern 64-bit architecture with, you know, threads and preemptive multitasking and all sorts of other stuff. Um, so sticking to an old uh, emulator and an old operating system on an old chip 
is very useful. Anyway, so that's my sort of um, just a quick glimpse into the, the, the past, the yesteryear. But if you go to Internet Archive, uh, have a look for Peter Norton's books and uh, you can download most of them or check them out, I think. And it's really worth it because Peter Norton made some really, really good books that explained computing and architecture. Um, and it's well worth a read even now because it gives you that baseline of, of how to how to start, how to get going, and then how to move on. Well, I hope you like this. Uh, I'll try and do some more videos of a similar nature if you like it. In the comments, let me know what sort of old software and stuff you use. Like, do you use an emulator for a, a 6502 CPU or a MK um, 68K or you know, an old 8088, uh, sorry, 8088, uh, or any sort of thing like that. Because uh, I'm interested in what people are doing with this sort of old technology and how they're using it, and if they're using the physical components or if they're just using emulators and things. So uh, let me know how you're, how you're getting on. And uh, please like and subscribe if you can, and share the video around, because that really helps my channel out. Thank you very much. See you soon.